First up, he is the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and a 2020 Democratic presidential candidate. Pete Buttigieg is here. Thank you. Hey there, Mayor Pete. How you doing? I know you have to run because you got to get. You're in Iowa. You got a, a campaign stop very soon, right? That's right. We're in Davenport right now. The snow is flying, but it uh, feels good here on the ground. Okay, so I'll get right to the questions. First of all, I was ending there with some commentary about Bernie and Biden, who seem to be now neck and neck at the head of the pack as the youngest guy in the campaign. What do you think about that, that, that this party that's so young-looking is embracing the two oldest people? Well, I suppose you could uh, run and succeed at any age, but I think the really important thing is, are we focusing on the future or are we tied up in the politics of the past? And I think at a moment like this, in order to govern, but also in order to win, we got to be focused on the future. Definitely in order to govern, because we're dealing with cybersecurity threats, global health risks, the economy changing in the era of technology but also in order to win the election. Uh, most of the folks I talk to mainly just want to be sure we beat Donald Trump. And if you think about it for a minute, every single time that my party has captured the White House in the last 50 years, it's been with a candidate who is looking to the future, new to national politics, and opening the door to a new generation. I, I'm... I think that was a very clever answer, Mayor Pete, mentioning all those things old people don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's... <laughs> and I gotta say, that's why I like you. You're good. I must tell you, you were on the show about a, I don't know, less than a year ago, but at the time, yep. very few of us had heard of you or could pronounce your name, and of course, we still can't, so we call you Mayor Pete. Uh... <laughs> But I, 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 I've Good become a big fan. Are multiple choice. You don't have to spell <laughs> it or pronounce it. You just got to be able to pick me off a list or stand in the right corner for the caucus. Well, <laughs> but for me, just as a voter, age is not a, an issue anymore. When I just heard about you, I didn't hear you. It kind of was. But I think you're a lot more mature than some of these people. <laughs> so, a, I mean, age is a case-by-case is -case basis. And also, I think what I like about you is I don't think you'll have to change your answers like some of the candidates for the general election. That's right. I mean, look, part of how we're going to win is to pull in uh, a broad coalition. And there are a lot of what I like to call future former Republicans who are showing up at my events. <laughs> We've been campaigning in some counties in Iowa here. They, they've swung maybe 20 points toward Donald Trump, and yet folks are coming out of the woodwork to my events. And I'm not trying to trick them. I'm not pretending to be uh, a conservative, but uh, I'm making sure that we have a vision that uh, a, a good, healthy majority of Americans can get on board with. And uh, that's not just true in terms of policy. It's true in terms of tone and style and just the kind of president that I think we want right now. You know, a president you could turn on the news and see and feel your blood pressure actually go down instead of up through the roof. Uh, that's, I think, a desire that crosses right. party lines and not something I'll have to change up for the general election. Right. I mean, uh, a month or two ago, it looked like for the, for the far left, and, and let's be clear, you're a progressive. There's not a Democrat in this race who isn't an honest progressive. Some are just very far left, and that would be Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, and he seems to have eclipsed her now. And I think that's because Bernie don't care about that woke stuff. You know? Bernie's just straight up about the economy, and I think that's what people care about. Would you assess it similarly? Well, I, I think that racial and economic inequality and justice go together. Uh, what we've got to do is make sure that we're pointing to all the patterns of exclusion that need to change. And when I talk about building a culture of belonging for the country, uh, it's making sure that people can thrive regardless of where they come from, regardless of their race, and, and that you can thrive wherever you sit in the economy. I mean, again, right now, uh, we're uh, in eastern Iowa in cities that are a lot like South Bend. Uh, and yeah, it, you know, you got a president who said he cares about the forgotten men and women and industrial workers, but you look at all of the economic policies they've had, and they're benefiting corporations, they're benefiting the wealthy, they're not doing anything for workers, for farmers. Uh, people can tell. And that is increasingly something that's not just important to progressive and died in the wool Democrats, but really mattering to independents and an awful lot of people getting ready to cross party lines.
Okay, well, when I said woke, I meant a broad range of issues, but I'm, uh, as long as you mention this, I just want to say, and again, you don't have to comment on this, but just, again, as a voter to the media, I would say one story I'm really tired of is Pete is not connecting with black voters. Yes, I heard that story many, many times. Get it. And can we move on? And, you know, I, I, I worry it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Do you? Well, that's why it's so important to do well here on the ground. You know, the strongest support that I have among black voters is among the folks who know me best. Uh, in South Bend, where most of the uh, black elected officials who've made endorsements are supporting me. And uh, on the ground in Iowa, we're seeing uh, uh, a lot of support. But look, the, the reality black is people in black Iowa? voters have every reason to be... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I mean, look, not in the not in the numbers you see in the South, but uh, no, absolutely. Their, their experience matters and, and it counts. And look, this is really important, right? I mean, nobody is experiencing more of the pain of living under the Trump presidency than communities of color. And that is one of the reasons there's such an emphasis on making sure that we win. And the process of proving that for all of us, begins right here in Iowa. And this is the chance, starting in three days with the caucuses, to demonstrate that I've got the kind of campaign organization to succeed and go on and beat Donald Trump. Okay, so I very often hear <laughs> use the phrase patriotic immunity, meaning Republicans seem to be able to get away with doing things that are unpatriotic and it doesn't stick to them, like Trump sides with countries not named America. Uh, versus Obama wore a tan suit. You know, stuff like that that just seems like we're playing two different games. Uh, you know, you're the only military veteran in this. But it seems like America cares less about that than they used to. You'd be the first one with military service to be elected since the first President Bush. Sorry, I should phrase yeah. a question. and I think uh, that's... The, <laughs> no, but look, I mean, that's what do you the think kind about of experience that? that I think is going to be... Yeah, I mean... Look, I mean, here you got a president, right, who will thump his chest, throw himself in military parade, and then turns his back on the troops. I mean, the latest was minimizing traumatic brain injury. If you know anything right. about what has happened to troops in the post-9-11 wars, you know that... And one thing I can tell you about traumatic brain injury is it can be a lot more serious than bone spurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I, I honestly think you would do very well in a debate with Donald Trump. I, I do. But, uh, all right, I, I know you got to go. I'm going to ask you one last question, and I know I nag people about this, and maybe they're tired of it, but... I laid it out last week in a way I've never laid it out before, but all down the line. I don't think if Trump loses, he's going to concede. Scenario, you win. You are president-elect Pete. We're still calling you Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and you win, but Trump says there are irregularities and he can't give up the office because it's a deep state hoax. What do you do? Well, it's going to be a little awkward when Chasten and I are moving into the White House, but at the end of the day, there's only one president. Uh, yeah, it's... Hey, if that, if, that was really the last, uh, if that was really the last question, then I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't uh, ask everybody watching who supports this campaign to go to PeteForAmerica.com and send in five or ten bucks. Actually, this is HBO, so you feel free to do 100 or 1,000. <laughs> All right, thank you. I know you got to go. I appreciate your time. I'm rooting for you. I'm a big fan. Mayor Pete, everybody. Thank you.